American Revolution was a war that took place in 1775 through 1783. The war was fought so that America could gain its freedom from Britain. The events that had happened before the Revolutionary War were the Stamp Act of 1765, Townshend Terrace of 1767, the Tea Act of 1773, as well as many others. The British Parliament passed the Stamp Act on March 22, 1765. The purpose of this act was that the colonists would have to pay taxes on any printed paper that they used. The money that was collected was used to defend and protect the American frontier, which was located near the Appalachian Mountains. Colonists were not happy with this act, but they continued to buy the stamps until Patrick Henry Stamp Act resolved the war put into place. This was when it was realized that Americans occupy the same rights as e the English, including the right to be taxed. In 1770, British soldiers opened fire after a crowd of angry Bostonians were rioting and throwing snowballs at them. This caused Jim Montgomery to slow them and fire his rifle, and the other soldiers started firing afterward killing five colonists in what is called the Boston Massacre. The British soldiers were then put on trial and defended by John Adams and Joshua Quincy. There is not enough evidence to execute them. Seven of them were acquitted and two others were charged with manslaughter. These two were branded on one hand and released. On May 10, 1773, the Tea Act was passed by the Parliament. This act gave the British East India Tea Company a monopoly on the tea sales, had to pay taxes on each pound of tea. This began to put them in debt. Before the Tea Act was passed, the British East India Tea Company had to sell its tea at an auction in London. Due to this, the tea company this also opened up the British East India Tea Company's markets to the lucrative American colonies. Additionally, under the Tea Act, duties Britain charged on the tea shipped to the American colonies would be waived or refunded upon sale that were made in the American colonies. This also allowed colonists to purchase only tea, British tea. Although the Tea Act did not enforce any new taxes, the taxes on glass, lead, oil, paint, and paper were still being enforced. The Tea Act was not created to anger the colonies. It was initially intended to be a bailout policy for the British East India Tea Company since they were in debt. The British Parliament was trying to fix the finance of the East India Tea Company, which started the Tea Act. States like Charleston and New York refused to accept the tea shipments, but Boston did receive the shipments because of the tea merchants for Boston, which was Governor Thomas Hutchinson's sons and nephews. On December 16, 1773, a band of Bostonians dressed up as Mohawk Indians, boarded British ships, and dumped 342 chests of tea from the ship Dartmouth into the Boston Harbor, which is called the Boston Tea Party. On March 28, 1774, the British Parliament was outraged and passed a series of measures called the Intolerable Acts. These acts were created to keep authority in Massachusetts after the Boston Tea Party. The Intolerable Acts were made up of five acts, and these were the Boston Port Act, which closed the port at Boston until the damages were paid from the events of the Tea Party, the Massachusetts Government Act, which denied Massachusetts Democratic town meetings, the Administration of Justice Act, which denied British officers the crimi criminal prosecution in Massachusetts, the Quartering Act, which forced Bostonians to house British soldiers, and the Fifth Act was the Quebec Act, which extended the freedom of worship to Catholics in Canada. And the, this act let Canadians continue their judicial system. After the passing of the Intolerable Acts, George Washington, Samuel Adams, Patrick Henry, and John Jay formed the Continental Congress and met in Philadelphia to make their complaints against the British. The Sons of Liberty were a group that was established to protest against the Stamp Act of 1765. When this group was first formed, they were known as the Loyal Nine. The Loyal Nine consisted of nine Boston keepers and artisans. John Avery Jr., distiller, Henry Bass, merchant and cousin to Samuel Adams, Thomas Chase, distiller, Thomas Crafts, painter, Stephen Cleverly, brazier, Benjamin Eds, printer of the Boston Gazette, 
Joseph Field, ship captain, John Smith, Brazier, George Trot, jeweler, and the ninth member was either Henry Wells, a mariner, or Joseph Fields, master of vessel. They were the masterminds behind the standback riot, riots and demonstrations regarding the Townsend Terrace and the Boston Tea Party. We wouldn't be here without the Revolutionary War. And I've gone back recently uh, in my own personal readings to try to understand more about that, how brave they were. And they were not just brave in a military sense, they were intellectually brave. The people who were in the forefront of the revolution were people engaged in commerce because they felt most specifically and directly British interference, British taxation and limitations. It's very interesting to think about the foundation of the nation and the fact that the country was born out of revolution and that sort of rallying spirit of win, win, win and fight back the oppressors persists. We were effectively guerrilla fighters. <laughs> we were not the Redcoats, after all. Two things. Number one, memo to the British forces, Ixnay on the red suits. That was probably not tactically the best move. Number two, if you're going up against guys who are using blankets for shoes in the middle of winter, bring your best game, because they'll open a can of early American whoop-ass on you. The American Revolution, in one sense, is an example of a war in which the weaker contestant prevails because it is more determined to persevere. It's almost a little man syndrome. <laughs> We've always felt a little, little undersized, a little underappreciated, and I think whenever you're able to take those feelings and manifest them and to try to do something that's positive, to try to do something that's competitive, you give yourself a lot better chance of being successful. The British Army was fighting for a king. The Americans were fighting for their lives. And it's not so much how much equipment you have or how much training you have, it's what's in your belly, it's what's in your heart. And you know you're fighting for your lives in a way of life as opposed to fighting for a monarch who you may not care about or may not love, but it's your job 